to where Thinkubator is today. We started from a startup competition as well. And we didn't win number one, huh? We won number two. So it's okay. Number two, three, four, it's okay. <laughs> and the idea of why we are so happy to contribute to Thinkubator is because we believe it's the right thing for Indonesia, we believe it's the right thing for Southeast Asia, and we are now in a fortunate position where we can start to give back in the way that we have received so much support over the past six, seven years throughout Grab's crazy journey. Okay? So, today, I'm going to try my very best to share some learnings with you from the many mistakes we've made, some learnings for all the amazing founders here and your teams as well, on how to deal with this roller coaster ride that you're now on. But before we do that, let's jump into why we're all here and why suddenly entrepreneurship is so important for the future of our economy. I'll start with bottom left. Huh? Oh, green on green, not very good. Never mind. In Southeast Asia, we have 640 plus million people in this region. Our economy is projected to be the fourth largest economy globally by the year 2030. This is only after US, China, and EU. By then, Southeast Asia will be number four. This is why everybody is so excited about our growth and future. That growth and future is also internet first, mobile first, right? Any country or region that has more than 100% penetration of mobile is Esla, right? The young generation. We carry around more than one phone. And we like to wear our hoodies as well. Beyond that, that growth is leading to a huge digital economy. Let me get out of the way. Huge digital economy. E-commerce, as we know, with local champions like Tokopedia, right hailing, thank you guys for continuing to support Grab. And of course, the cashless growth that we can see is driven by the fact that going cash is super expensive. It costs our governments more than 1.5% of total GDP to just print and distribute cash. That is what we're trying to make better. This is why Grab has become Southeast Asia's everyday super app. We started with transport, but we know there's so much more to do now. Right? We are trying to help solve many different problems together. Your most painful transactions you have to do, getting into Machet, waiting for food, having a cash payment, or not being able to get loans or insurance. These are some of the big challenges that we want to solve together for the people of Indonesia and Southeast Asia. And you will ask, how did we come up with that crazy journey, right? We started here. That's our very first app. Ugly, right? <laughs> Don't worry. We started there too. Six or seven, seven years ago, when we first launched this app, back then, we thought it was a miracle and we thought it was magic. Right? Whenever we could get a taxi after clicking a button, everybody thought it was like, oh my gosh, what just happened there? Now, if you don't get your grab by in four minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, our call center gets so many tickets and complaints. Right? So how expectations have changed and how technology has helped to enable that. Throughout all the years that we have innovated, it's only as of last year, after the Uber acquisition, after the Uber consolidation, where we showed that a locally grown regional startup could take on global champions, right? That's when we said, okay, we can move from our transport core. We can start to serve the people of Southeast Asia more and more now. And if you look at our app today, it looks so different from before. And that's because our ambitions, our aspirations, and our capabilities have gone far beyond what it used to be. But don't forget, we started ugly too. Okay. So going back to some big numbers, right? I don't want to spend too much time, but 
I just want to share, because we started from humble beginnings, we started in your shoes, it is possible to achieve big dreams if we're, you're willing to work hard on them. Today, Grab, we're in 336 cities. That number changes every week, huh? so I have to look at the, the slide as well. We're in eight countries. Last year, we had a revenue of more than US $1 billion. We now have had more than 140 million downloads throughout the region. But what is most important for us is that we continue to serve millions of micro-entrepreneurs, not just drivers, not just merchants, agents as well. And we served more than 9 million of them to date. We want to serve many, many more. And of course, as I shared, we have had the backing of many, many great partners. These giants, we stood on their shoulders. And hopefully, we can start to share some of that future with you as well and help you along your initial journeys. Okay, so I'm going to spend a, f a bit of time talking about some learnings for the company. A lot of people ask us, how do you build a regional product for Southeast Asia when the region is so different? Just now, if you looked at the small print, Myanmar, GDP, 1,000 per capita on average, $1,000. Singapore, $55,000. There's a 1 to 50 ratio there. Right? You go to Myanmar or Cambodia, not all the roads are paved. Right? Not everybody has a mobile phone. So this is what we are trying to do. We are trying to bring equal access to the entire region. And of course, you guys know Indonesia is a huge part of Southeast Asia and one we're super committed to. How do we do that? We go hyperlocal. This is why we have an amazing team like Pak Ritsky, Bu Neneng, Pak Onki, Pak Medico, right? And all the other folks here, all the other amazing grabbers that I see as well that help, help us get here. We want you guys to be able to do that as well. Get the best local talent, whether it's in different cities in Indonesia or whether for us it's different cities in Southeast Asia. Find them, empower them and help each other and that's how we grow. Our products are also hyperlocal. So, in Indonesia you get access to services that you don't get anywhere else. For example, I think last week we launched Trip Planner which is thanks to a great partnership with MRT in Indonesia, uh, in Jakarta, that just launched, right? Where it's a brand new product for us. I'll, I'll go back here if you haven't seen it. Eh? Okay, la. maybe I shouldn't switch slides too much. Let's stick here. Trip planner, or OVO, or groceries deliveries, all of these, or Hook, they're all Indonesia first products that we have launched because we know that this is what our Indonesian customers want. You launch a big technology company, you can't get a clicker to work, it still is terrible, right? Okay, how we do this? It's not just the local teams in each country and city. We also staff for the best global and local technology talent. It's the first time in the world that any startup from Southeast Asia has gone global with R&D centers. So to share with you, we have three R&D centers that are outside of Southeast Asia. And these are places like Seattle, Beijing, and Bangalore, which have historically already had the best global talent and are known to be technology hubs, where we've been able to find people to join us on our journey. And the reason why they do it, even though they're not Southeast Asian, is because they can see the impact that we have on millions of lives. They can't get this kind of experience anywhere else. And that's the same kind of impact you can have in Indonesia, starting with Indonesia. We have 200 plus million people here. There's a lot of lives to influence, right? And then, of course, we get the best local talent, one R&D center here in Jakarta, one in Vietnam, Singapore, and Malaysia as well. This is how we innovate so quickly. It's always people first. That talent goes into building things that help us scale. So last year, we built a technology platform that creates APIs that enable different partners to plug and play into our infrastructure, that enables different partners to get access to our millions of users and our payments technology, our fraud technology, our ID technology. This is what 
technology enables. It gives you access at the flick of a finger to millions of other people if you can work together. And talking about great partners, in Indonesia alone, we are extremely fortunate, beyond the support of all the local ministries and government, to have people like Tokopedia, Kudo, Hook, Ovo, and Happy Fresh on this journey of us. We're hoping to grow this list much more, and we're hoping that you guys can feature in this as well in the future. Last but not least, this is something really important to us. Started the slide and presentation with lots of very big numbers, billions, millions, you know. It starts to become rounding errors at some point in time, but that's not really why we are here. Anthony, my co-founder and I, the reason why we started the company and the thing that keeps us going every single day and every single week is the people we impact. We spend a lot of time speaking to drivers, merchants, passengers, food eaters. We spend a lot of time understanding their pain points and also the things that they now have been able to do because of Grab. This is a story of Bumala. She joined us four years ago. She was one of our very first Grab bikers. And her story really breaks your heart in some way because before Grab, she was the single bird winner of her house. Her husband passed away. She has one daughter. And she had no opportunities. She was not professionally trained. She was not well educated. And therefore, she had no opportunities to earn a fair, honest income. The moment Grab came about, she signed up. And she's been with us for four years. And in those four years, not only has she been able to put food on the table, she's been able to send her daughter to university and pay for her wedding too. right? She feels so fortunate that every time any passenger jumps onto her bike, she wants to help them. She's helped actually, really random story, but true. If you speak to her, she found out during one of her rides with a, a young middle school boy that he was struggling with maths. She said, hey, let me help you because I've, I've taught my daughter before. She actually went to spend time teaching the guy and he did actually pretty well in his exams. This is how thankful she is for the opportunities that she has. Okay, so that's what keeps us going. So that's company-wide what drives us, how we think about growing, and why we are where we, we are today. But to be honest, the company matters less if the leaders are not learning as we grow. So the next few slides, I'm going to share a bit around some of the personal learnings, right? I love Venn diagrams, sorry, I'm ex McKinsey. In this, you will see our constant challenge as founders and leaders every single day of the balance we are trying to strike between taking what we call intelligent risks, risks that are just in between the probabilities of success and failure that will lead to outsized outcomes. Because if you play it too safe, if you play it too safe, you're like, okay, you'll be successful, but it'll be incremental. Right? It'll be a tiny, tiny improvement. If you play it too risky, your likelihood of failure is going to be extremely high. So what you're constantly trying to do is find out where is that sweet spot in the middle. Not easy. The one thing we've learned is the only constant throughout this process is that we will make mistakes. And mistakes are not bad. In fact, Mistakes are only bad if you don't learn from them. So to us, when we think about how and what has enabled Grab to grow, it's actually not the number of mistakes we've learned or we've made, but how fast we've learned from them and how fast we make sure that we and our teams don't repeat the same mistakes over and over again. So if you know you're going to make a lot of mistakes, how do you deal with it when you're like, shit, every single day, this sucks, right? Again, ex-consultant, I love frameworks. This is three hours, okay? <laughs> Reflect, re rest, and reset. What do I mean by this? You know, when you make small mistakes every single day, that's, that's easy, easy to adjust, easy to fix, operations, whatever it is, right? There are easy mistakes, and then there are the big mistakes that really hurt. 
when you, as a leader, know that shit, it was my fault. Something isn't quite right. Or we took a wrong strategic move, right? And we weren't quite able to figure it out. We try and try, no matter how much work we put into it, the outcomes don't change. So clearly, we are making the same mistakes again. What do you do then? Give yourself space. Don't hit yourself hard and don't bash yourself too much for it. Because if it were that easy, everybody else would be doing it. Okay? Give yourself space by stepping back, saying, hey, how do I think about this? Forget about the, uh, the trees, step back and look at the forest and say, reflect on what has led to this situation and what you think could have been the different reasons why you are where you are now. And give yourself space to rest. It gets tiring. Right? So once you reflect, you rest, you figure out what's the root cause, what you want to do differently this time. Because if you do the same thing again, it, you're like Einstein's quote, you're, you're stupid if you, you try and do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. Okay? I didn't exa he didn't exactly say those words, but Google it. You'll get something similar. Okay? Once you do that, once you figure out how you're going to do th things differently, reset and then move forward. Folks, because if you don't give yourself space, nobody else will. You're ultimately the leaders of your company. Your investors are expecting you to do this. Your team members, the people you've hired, your partners, they're expecting you to do this. And the only person who can tell yourself to do this is yourself. Okay? This one, I love cheesy comments, one size doesn't fit all. So easy to say, so difficult to do. It starts as simple as, I have a team of five people. How do I interact with those five people? The same style or different? How do I help them grow? How do I give them feedback? How do I encourage and motivate them? It needs to be tailored because every one of us is different. So one of the biggest learning challenges and, and journeys that I'm still on and will forever be on is to try and increase my toolkit of leadership and management styles. If you were to speak to me 10 years ago, my favorite activity was to stare in front of a laptop screen and do Excel and PowerPoint. Ask me to go spend time doing what I'm doing right now, I will cry and run away, right? But I know that Grab needed it, and that's why I grew and learned to do this. For the company and for you guys as well, okay? That is as simple as within your team. More importantly, the same principle also holds for your customers. One of the things that we like to say at Grab is, I am not the customer. I'm merely one in hundreds of millions of customers. My experience, what I expect, what I think is good and what I think is bad, is not always the same as what other people think. We can do the same product test, the same user test in Jakarta. The results will be different from Manado, different from Ho Chi Minh, different from Singapore. We need to segment and tailor our products again in a hyper-local way, however best we can. Easier said than done, I know, I'm sorry. I'm giving you very easy things to say, very difficult things to do. But that's really important to think about. And why we're here today, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. All of you, I actually just want to give yourself a round of hands of applause. Can you guys clap for yourself? for the key reason that you have already decided to take that risk and you are already on that journey, which is the most difficult thing to do, which is to start. It's not easy. I don't know how many of you are facing a similar problem. When we first started seven years ago, I can tell you all my good friends, my best friends, my family, everybody said to me, Ling, are you crazy? Why are you doing this? What are you thinking of? X, Y, Z. It went on and on and on. But the reason why I did it and continued to do it was because, one, I thought the problem really needed to be solved 
For us, it was safety for passengers, convenience for passengers. It was income opportunities for our drivers and giving them a sense of worth that they never had before. Those were really big problems that for many generations, nobody had solved throughout Southeast Asia for the longest time. And that's what I cared about. I was naive about it. In, in full transparency, I had no idea where it was going to go. But I felt passionately enough about it, and I did believe that the idea that Anthony and I had initially was actually a good one, and if we didn't take that shot, like Wayne Gretzky, Gretzky says, we would be sad about it, and the people around us would be worse off because of it. Likelihood of success at that point in time, single digit percentages, right? I, I don't even know. We got lucky, and we know that, and we still know that we're very lucky every single day to be where we are, and we want to share that luck now. But so, thank you guys for taking that step. The one ask is make sure you feel super passionately about what you're doing. If you're not passionate about the problems you're solving, the customers you're so serving, and the team that you're working with, trust me, it's going to be way more difficult than you need it to be. There are much easier ways to earn money, okay? And not everybody needs to be an entrepreneur. I never wanted to be. Kind of kind of wonder why I still did it. But it's okay. You get what I mean? If you care about it, do it. And we will do whatever we can to make sure we create an environment around you to enable your success more than not. So how are we planning on doing this? For those of you who don't already know, beyond programs like Thinkubeta, where we're in partnership with the government here, with the amazing things that they're trying to do as well, we've also got Grab Ventures and the Velocity program. We launched this last year. We've already gone through batch one. We had a slightly different selection process. There was no live pitching, okay? There was no TV, there was no transmedia. There was no Pat right? But we managed to bring together five amazing startups that we did a couple of things with. We gave them access to the Grab app via the platform and APIs. They were easy, their services were easily surfaced into the Grab feed. Some of them, in six weeks, huh, they got 70% more transactions than they ever did before coming on Grab in just six weeks because they suddenly got access to 100 million plus users. And we want to create this opportunity for more of you. Beyond that, we also brought them together for mentoring, coaching. We gave them access to all the VCs that we've already built relationships with as well. And it was a very, very successful what we call batch one. I sat next to Patria one just now, I asked him, where would you like Incubator to go after this, after today, after tomorrow? He said he wants it to be forever, consistent. And that's what we're doing. Ventures Velocity is going into batch two. For those of you who want to find out more, I believe there's a booth out there and we have our, Ventures, uh, our GVV folks out there with more details on how to apply what we look for. But in batch two, there are two core things that we care about. There are two tracks. The first track is to empower farmers. But Luhu talked about this a bit just now. There are many, many different industries that really enable us to live the lives that we do. Grab food will be nothing without food. Food comes from farmers, fishermen, right? How do we help empower them and enable their lives to be more efficient and effective? Via technology, that's what we're hoping to do with track one. Track two, I talked about the 9 million micro-entrepreneurs. I talked about Mala, the great bike driver. We want to find more and better ways to empower, again, more of them. If you have ideas that you think would benefit from some of what Grab Ventures Velocities can also help you with, please go outside and sign up. This is the last slide. One of my favorite quotes. If you want to go fast, go alone. No problem, you can sprint. But if you want to go far, go together.
right? I wish you all the very best luck. And you have any thoughts and suggestions on how we can help you more, please reach out to our teams because we want to know and we want to take action on it. Ngase! Yeah.